How's it going, everybody? We have noticed some very pivotal things in the Crucible meta that people are taking for granted. They're just assuming Team A beats Team B no matter what. And that is definitely not true. So in this video, we're going to talk about the three biggest pain points in Crucible Season 7 to make sure you're winning as much matches as possible. Without further ado, let's get into it right now. All right, let's start by talking about the raid on Crucible Room. This is stage two of season seven. Now, people just straight up say, Hive Mind beats Pegasus. Now, I tried this my first time doing it, and I overthought it. I didn't use the Red Goblin ultimate because my Red Goblin went after Gwenpool or Gwenum, and I didn't want to do it without him having offense up. Now, I did it again afterwards where I did do Red Goblin ultimate, and well, let's watch the results here because. You might be surprised, it is still an instant fail. So what is happening here is we're having an order of operations issue where we need Gwenum to go before Red Goblin. Now we've already isolated this issue. Big shout out to Bella in the Twitch chat right now who helped us figure that out, or Bella's. Big Pitch Perfect fan, I'm assuming. I am as well. Um, so you might notice here we got Carnage going next. We're going to hit into Loki because he's kind of the smallest. He's got a Vulnerable. It's an extra 10% damage. We're trying to get the Hive Mind passive uh, speed bar going. But right here, this is the big issue. So Red Goblin is going to ult uh, before he gets the offense up. Now, I want you to take note of the damage that happens here. It's very good damage. It happens after the fact, pretty much. All the... It's weird how the damage from Red Goblin Ultimate goes in. You see people drop even more. So what do you see here that's very important? We got three people in stealth. We have Loki, Sylvie, and Vol. Beta Ray Bill is not in stealth, and Teen Loki is not in stealth. Had Red Goblin had offense up when he did this, that would have been the case. So what you need to do is you need to make sure your positioning for your Hive Mind is correct. You might notice that I have Venom in the corner with Gwenom beside it. This is my biggest mistake here. Because when we steal energy from Vol using the special, or we ultimate with uh, Void Knight to give ability block to the Sylvie, no matter what, she's going to use her basic. And her basic does a chain attack, but her basic also does a turn meter rewind. And because it does a turn meter rewind, it's going to make your Red Goblin go before your Gwenum if she gets tagged. So from left to right, it's very important on your position. You want to have Venom. Then Carnage, we don't care if he gets rebound. We don't care that he's going to go after Red Goblin. In fact, it might be a benefit. Void Knight in the middle with then Gwenom and Red Goblin in the corner together to make sure neither of them is getting rebound. If you want to make sure you're super safe, uh, you need to check your Venom's health pool. He needs to have the highest health on your team to make sure he's getting the taunt. That's just how Red Goblin's passive works. Now, if that's not the case... You want to isolate who your highest health target is, put them in the corner, and then do a similar positioning where you're hiding Gwenom and Red Goblin. <laughs> if your Gwenom has the highest health in your team, how did you accomplish that? And then don't use this counter because then it's not going to work for you. But if you do that, you're going to have a much better result and you should be able to go from there. Let's go ahead and let's look at a different matchup that people really assumed worked. I assumed it would work too. And that's going to be our extreme into Bifrost. Here we are going to do a Bifrost into Extreme, and you might notice right off the gate, this is going to be a loss. I'm going to show this, even though it's a spoiler alert, because I just want you to see the punch-up. This was a 300k punch-up, but I don't think the punching up matters here. What really matters here is the Bifrost team, when used on offense, is really at the mercy of having exposes to hit into. So because Vol does the first hit on Gambit here, the expose is dodged, right? And so there's no speed bar happening, there's no energy happening there. And then Forge is going to go. He's actually going to take a lot of damage here, which is great. We do a nice rewind here. Again, fantastic. We got to isolate the Forge. We got to kill the Forge before he gets to go. Because then uh, he'll do a bunch of nasty stuff, right? So we get stuck on the Rogue Taunt, which is why people are putting Rogue in there. The uh, Mind Control is going to get her pushed quite easily. This can't be dodged or Forge's dodge is fake. One of those two things is true. We do get the Expose on Forge, but then he's immediately dead. So once again, we're not really benefiting from the Expose. And now the extreme characters, they've already had their first turn. They're looking at doing some nasty, nasty ultimates to us. Uh, luckily for us, we're going to get through the gambit here. We get to alt. This is going to be dodged. Beta Ray Bill kind of sucks. Not the player, the character. And then uh, Nightcrawler does Nightcrawler things. And then you can see here why this is going to be a turbo loss. So extreme not looking like they beat... Uh, sorry, Bifrost not looking like they beat Extreme when there's a Rogue there at the very least, but probably not at all. Let's go look at another matchup that people have been trying and struggling with, and that's going to be our Hive Mind going into a Pegasus. 
All right, so once again, I'm burying the lead here. I just want to show you the punching power. This is Hive Mind losing, doing a 100k punch up into the Pegasus team. Now, I, this is one that I did get to try a lot on the playtest during the playtest time. And uh, it went even worse for me than what you're going to see here. So let's go ahead and get into it. And it starts, obviously, with the... Uh, the Pegasus team getting all their turns, but because Void Knight puts slow on Kestrel, she's actually going to go last. Now, this you would think would work out to your benefit, but what it's actually doing is it's making sure all the other Pegasus characters rip off those Deflex before Kestrel goes. So Kestrel is going to ultimate into somebody that doesn't have Deflex, get that permacoil. In this case, it was Gwenum, which is going to make sure they can't get any more energy, going to make sure they don't get offense up, defense up, that sort of stuff. And then it's harder for this team to snowball. Now, now, that permakill was kind of RNG based. It could have went to a bunch of people. It could have went on to Red Goblin, and then the match is completely over. It could have went on to Carnage, then they're no longer getting their speed up. It could have went to Void Knight, and then none of these buff flips happen, and then it's an auto loss. So the Hive Mind team into Pegasus, not a super good look. And now what I want to show you is what I think the raid room is actually going to evolve into as we move into this season. And here's an example of what I think the raid room is going to evolve into. Because the raid room, uh, the raid room seems like it's a rock, paper, scissors matchup with rock being like really, really strong. And the rock team in this case is going to be your Pegasus. So Bifrost, listen, I know you guys, a lot of you are going to swear by the hive mind counter. I think now that we've isolated some of the issues, it's going to be a lot more secure. I don't think it's going to be automatic though with Vols sometimes retaliating people, instantly killing them, right? Like, if Red Goblin were to die when he does his ultimate, I think you could get into a little sketchy situation there, but it's probably mostly safe. Pegasus, on the other hand, the uh, mirror match is an absolute nightmare, um, just because of the way turns go. We'll show a video of that in a second. The Bifrost team into Pegasus takes a lot of turns, so that's a huge efficiency sink, and then their Bifrost is not on the defensive side. Uh, and then Hive Mind itself gets waxed and needs a big catalyst like Skrull to come in. And then when you talk about other teams that you could potentially bring in here, like Cabal, well, then you don't have Cabal elsewhere, and that's a problem, right? So let's check out the Pegasus Mirror matchup here. You can see my opponent did lose one here, then did an initial hit with Hive Might, and then had to go clean up with Pegasus. So right now, this is a Pegasus team attacking another Pegasus team, but the Pegasus on defense has the Exhausted here, which is going to be a problem. So right away, you see that ultimate from my Kestrel hits the opponent, brings them to about 40% life. That is a permakill ability. That is an exhausted Kestrel who did not crit. If she crit that Kestrel, this match is probably over, exhaust or not. Because that the rescue would not be able to bring her back. You lose all that damage from Kestrel and it becomes a really, really bad time. So the mirror matchup, definitely not as secured as you would want it to be. And so you end up with some problems. But once again, you could buy Frost this. The raid room is definitely rock, paper, scissors heavy, which I mean, I think it means we're going to start seeing some variations on our, our uh, raid teams. Like we're going to be seeing maybe Apocalypse in there, maybe Skrull in there, but then you're probably also going to be pulling enemy Cabal teams over to you, which could pose a, uh, a very big issue as well. We know that the Bifrost with Skrull team has been annihilated by Cabal teams. I wonder if the um, Pegasus with Skrull team could also get annihilated by the Cabal team. Because remember, the on-spawn speed bar for Pegasus will go through despite Cabal. Uh, but then the Skrull will stand there like a shiny statue. So interested to see how this room plays out. Let me know how your adventures with the raid room rules are going. Um, this is, I think, going to be the defining characteristic of this season. Especially when Spider Society comes out. So Spider Society demolishes Pegasus. Um... It seems like there might be a weird interaction with Hive Might and Spider Society because it looks like uh, Spider-Man Pavitra is supposed to stop the enemy from getting speed up, but if the Hive Mind is on offense and the Spider Society is on defense, the speed up still happens, which is awkward. Uh, but Spider Society also looks like it could probably be beating Bifrost. Um, it's definitely going to be beating Extreme once again if it can stop that speed up from happening. Um, and also, there's been a lot of backlash on the Spider Society team right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see, like, a big buff to them coming, whether that be in the form of speed to the Spider Society team or focus, because that focus seems to be a huge issue in Incursion 2. But once again, guys, let me know what your experiences are like in this uh, raid room in Crucible Season 7 so far.
So the next meta defining issue right now in Crucible Season 7 is how people are using their Superior 6 and the various counters that can be used against Superior 6. Now, I uh, I use a scroll counter normally, or at least I did last season to take on Superior 6, and it's it's pretty automatic, right? It's pretty guaranteed. It's basically scroll with Doom and Hawkeye doing their damn thing and kind of just wreaking havoc. So let's go ahead and watch that real quick. Um, but it costs you scroll, and it does seem like where scroll goes is going to be uh pulling cabal if it's on the defensive side but where scroll goes on the offensive side could very well determine some raid matches so if you need to use scroll here then that could potentially pose a big problem right but the idea is that uh scroll does a bunch of attacks doom gets hit hawkeye's there for safety he's going to pull another attack in and then doom brings scroll for the ride and in this season because the superior and this is going to come into effect because superior six doesn't spawn with defense up um they get absolutely shredded by scroll so this is scroll on the ride now he's got the offense up uh, you see the doom even already killed the craven which i thought was crazy and then boom it's over right now a uh, friend of the channel and another great content creator jutsi came up with another counter to the superior 16 which works really really well but there's some things to look out for this is a team here and it's noir doom with the Eternals and Minerva. Now you might notice my Doom is a Raider. That's because this is in stage one and my opponent's uh, Lizard is a Skirmisher. So if Lizard does get to go and Doom is ability blocked, he has to be Raider to clear that. But there's other issues and there's a little bug we're gonna talk about, uh, but there's also a particular turn order to make sure you're adhering to when this happens. So let me go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Let's see what happens here. Also, I'm hearing that Pegasus Sus gets dump trucked by Void Knight, Red Goblin, and Cabal. So right here, I'm trying to make sure that my Noir gets to go twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do through the special into, into Doc Ock. Because if no debuffs land, then my Noir is going to gain 50% speed bar. Now that is a mistake. You're supposed to use the Noir ultimate because it does put heal block out and Craven flips that, which gives Noir more speed bar. So that is the first issue, but that even when you do this properly, something wonky can happen. And that is going to be uh, a retaliation, which is a bug coming in from uh, Doc Ock, which is going to put slow on you, which is a problem, right? So the proper positioning for Spear 6, if you want to have them on defense, is going to be Doc Ock beside the lizard because what would happen is yad noir will do his ultimate uh, but he's gonna hit doc hawk and lizard lizard has more life than doc hawk then when you do the noir special which can be retaliated uh, if that hits the doc hawk and an assist comes in you can see my noir has slow so my noir only took one turn which then lets the lizard going now that's not the only problem, right? Because if you have, and this is a scaling issue, if you're at the highest end of Crucible and you have a very big Doom, two hits does not guarantee your Doom gets pushed. So what could happen is Noir takes his two turns, which is how it's supposed to play out, which Jutsi's done a million times, and it's worked out for a lot of people. Uh, and the Doom doesn't get pushed while well, Lizard goes. Lizard will push the Doom. You're going to want him as a Skirmisher because that's going to put a Billy Buck on Doom. And if the opponent didn't have their Doom as a Raider, then that's, that's it. Game over for them right there. Um, but because Lizard steals the offense up from Icarus, there is a world here where Noir goes for the ride. And that's not a small chance because Noir now has like a top 10% damage. I think he's actually number 11, right? Another thing that would be, that would cause you issues here is if Lizard does get to go because your doom is too big and Lizard does the ultimate, then he gets his taunt here. You would really, 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 really want your Doom to be a skirmisher in this case because Doom's basic is unblockable and it can start peeling some buffs off. So what the problem with that is obviously if your Doom has the ability to block, then he's wrecked. My Icarus gets to go for the ride here, but because he is uh, not having offense up, this special doesn't hit nearly for as hard as we want it to. Uh, I ult on the second turn because ho I'm hoping that it's in time. I should have done another basic here. Uh, but regardless, I wouldn't have got the kills on the Green Goblin. Because Lizard, when he does his ultimate, he stole the defense up from the Eternals. And now you can see we have a defense up on the Goblin, on the uh, Doc Ock, on everybody, right? So it, the damage is no longer sufficient to get through it. So long story short, here's the skinny, all right? You want your Noir to be a skirmisher, so he starts peeling off some initial buffs from the Lizard. You might need to have your Doom as a Raider if the enemy Lizard is a Skirmisher. Worst case scenario, Lizard gets to go. You're going to need to peel some of those buffs off. 
If not, you gotta stick with Raider, and you just gotta hope with Noir stealing some buffs from Lizard, hit Lizard twice with Noir, that you're gonna be able to get past it and get on over to that Goblin. Because if you don't kill the Goblin in time, well, let's watch what happens when we don't get to the Goblin in time. And obviously, leaving this team up. Leaving this team up becomes an absolute nightmare, right? So what I what I personally did to try and make my superior six a little bit more difficult on the defensive end is I took out Spider Slayer. That removes the offense up from Goblin and is going to make even like the smaller Dooms not get pushed. And so that becomes a problem, right? So I put Vulture in instead of Spider Slayer. I made sure Doc Ock was beside the Lizard to lean into potential uh, bug issues. But, and Juicy brought this up and it's a great point. If somebody else has their superior six on defense, or sorry, on offense, and I have mine on defense with Vulture in there instead of Spider Slayer, that becomes a very, very efficient kill on the mirror matchup. So this, this news, and the fact that there is a Noir team that can work, might lead to superior six being like an offense only team, especially if you have those wakened abilities, right? But another warning in that case if you are a spender who bought the awakened abilities for your green goblin your green goblin puts defense on his team on offense so if you're doing the mirror matchup the enemy lizard will steal that defense up before the goblin gets to go because there's obviously spider verse characters on your team and then the lizard spreads that defense up and then it's going to tax the efficiency a little bit more than it otherwise would have so I'm curious to see what's going to happen with the uh, Superior 6 team. I do think, the more I think about it, it's probably still best to have your Superior 6 in Stage 1 if you want them on defense. Definitely make your Lizard a Skirmisher. Let people have to uh, move around their ISOs. Also, because a lot of people have Raider on their Doom, so they're not going to be able to remove his ISO uh, to make him more likely to get pushed if they have big Dooms. Anyway, let me know what you guys are thinking about the Superior Six. Uh, have they been an issue for you at all? Or are you just going to keep them on offense to make sure that you have a sort of master key for a lot of teams? They do actually beat the um, the Dorm Hold Secret Defender team. Or the uh, the Secret Dorm Hold or the Dorm Defender Hold team. Whatever you want to call it. All right, let's move on to the last crisis. All right, the third thing I want to talk about in this video is uh, Stage 4, your Out of Time team, your Cabal team, and a little touching on Skrull. But before we touch on Skrull, let's touch back on Superior 6. <laughs> you might find this funny. Uh, my opponent lost a 500,000 punch down with Superior 6 into a straight Out of Time team. Now, this is not a shot at my opponent. This never, ever should have happened. They played as... They did everything they could have done, right? So... Uh, you might notice no defense up on the Superior 6 team. This hurts them a little bit, but not too, too much. Uh, as literally nobody except Black Knight is going to do attacks here. Stage 4, removing life from the team, is, is very, very bad. But Black Knight, doing what Black Knight does, giving trauma and uh, all those bleeds that are really powerful if you make your Black Knight a striker, plus heal block is so obnoxious that you need to respect the out-of-time team in stage four like he respected the team let's make no mistake but he gets demolished by just black knight a six red star uh gear tier 18 black knight does this to a giant superior 16 which is unfair and unfun there's a couple of things here that could have helped out obviously uh bringing mysterio in would have helped peel some of those charges that, that attack that killed goblin didn't have to happen if there were mysterio bots here um also, if you brought a scroll in here, scroll could alt turn one. I've not seen that in practice. I imagine that would help things a little bit here. Um, but also, there's just better options for this, right? Like, uh, for uh, for example, is if you see a straight out of time team, you might want to be a little bit safer. Go with Cabal here. I'm going to come in here with Cabal. This is my spender account. I take Kestrel and Vulture. I come in here and, well... Same thing that happened with Superior 6. My Kestrel and my Vulture just get absolutely demolished by the Black Knight. Uh, there was a reason I brought both these characters in. RNG decided to mess with me. I got stuck behind the Captain America. And then my Vulture and my Kestrel don't get a turn. This is Stage 5, for the record. But then the Cabal team, being who they are, they are uniquely equipped to deal with characters like Black Knight. Um, again, though, this is the Spender account. This was a 7 Red Star black knight if my characters were not all six red star this could have went super bad for me right 
So Neymar comes in. He starts just annihilating people. Leader's going to come in as well. Uh, do uh, some big damage here. Lots of energy happening, right? Lots of crits happening as well. So you got to make sure you have the right isos on your guys. And then this is kind of the nail in the coffin. The uh, the special from Namor absolutely crushes. So if you've been chilling on your Namor, you may not want to be doing that. But so the Cabal team gets through this. Now there are other options that I actually don't have pulled up here. Um, a good a good counter to a straight out of time team. A big time Spider Man as a skirmisher. He's going to strip all the buffs off of Black Knight. Now, there could be some bad RNG that can happen to you, and that would suck. But if Big Time does that, follow it up with Spider Weaver, not Tangled Web, just Spider Weaver. She can then stun the Black Knight, and then no assists are coming in. And then you pair those two with the Eternals, who go after Tangled Web. You get lots of rewinds coming in, lots of damage coming in. And if you have a solo Kestrel, you can throw her in as well. Lots of uh, unblockable stuff can happen with her, which is great. Or just any other fifth would be very, very interesting there. So there's some options. And what I would say is there's also the nuclear option that some people are doing with their Black Knight, right? So my opponent here, just Black Knight, no... Uh, Captain America, which I think is a mistake. I think you always want to have Captain America and Black Knight paired for those deflects, that little bit of RNG. But you can see, you know, we got a big green boy here, the scroll, and this is where you might want to juice up your Cabal team. I don't think I had to in this situation because there's no Captain America and because as long as I get a crit, my Cabal team is going to control um, that scroll and just kill him before it matters. But you still need to be able to answer the Black Knight here because otherwise you might have yourself what happened to my other opponent with that superior six getting just absolutely decimated, right? So if somebody goes nuclear on you, you might want to go nuclear on them and bring in the Kang here. You see, I contemplate. I end up going for the ultimate. I think I probably should have just Kanged basic there to make sure the Black Knight dies. Uh, but with my free-to-play uh, Cabal team, I'm still going to get through. So this is actually a three red, three yellow Iron Patriot. And you can see that damage with the buff flip does really, really nice. Uh, he does immediately die, which means Skrull is now getting turn meter. So you got to be careful there. But by then, it's just a little bit too late. Uh, too little, too late. And then, boom, Titania, three diamonds, is going to seal the deal. Maybe two diamonds on that one. Uh, but I'm interested to know what you guys are experiencing in Stage 4, particularly with Black Knight against villains, and what you're doing with your Cabal. There's a couple other interesting things to talk about this season that maybe we'll do in the next video we talk about Crucible. Uh, like the, the Darkhold, Dorm, uh, Morgan team, sorry, Morgan, Dorm, Secret Defender team that we're seeing in Stage 6. Um, stage 3, like Infinity Watch, is kind of a bust with War Dogs getting it down more efficiently than they have in the past because the offense up assists and stuff like that. Um, but there just seems to be a lot more going on than what people think. So I'm interested to know what your experiences are so far in Season 7 of Cosmic Crucible. Uh, did you fall victim to the Hive Mind versus Bifrost like I did? Uh, or did you just straight up wax it the entire time? Did you just happen to have the right positioning? Did you already know about the right positioning? Again, big shout out to Bellas. We're going to be trying that in our next um, possible matchup against Bifrost and see if that is just like the sign seal delivered uh, victory. Ignore that random edit. This is it for this video. Hope you liked it. If you did, make sure you like, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay happy, healthy, have fun. And I'll see you in the next one. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun. And I'll see you in the next one.